Welcome back to the stage, Jenny Olson. Thank you. Thanks, Shari. Um, thank you for being such an awesome audience. Um, uh, wow, I'm uh, you know a little bit in shock. Um, um, I realized as soon as it was about to start that I forgot to say the thing that I'm like so obsessive about, which is the fact that it was shot on 16 millimeter film. Okay. Um, so it, was, it was finished on HD, but. Um, but I also have to say that I really, I love Jen Reeves' short that we got to see. She's, she wasn't a really good um, And which is obviously on 16 millimeter. Was that an actual 16 millimeter film or? Yes. Do you know? Yes? Yes. Wow. That was probably the only film projected on film in the festival. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, wow. You guys are lucky. Um, uh, so, uh, I would love to do a Q&A. I have like a billion people to thank. Um, and, uh, but, and I also have almost all of the team is here, and so I want to bring them up. And if you could possibly resist clapping, I know it'll be hard. But um, let me just say all the names and have everybody come up and then you can give them a big round of applause. Um, uh, let me do this in like a subdued way so you're not tempted to clap, okay? <laughs> okay. My voiceover director, Sawyer Steele. My musician, Chris Pirica. My executive producers, Deb Kinney and Paul Marcarelli. My sound recordist, Loretta Molitor. My uh, cinematographer, Sophie Constantino, resist the urge to clap. My editor, Don Logston. Um, and my post-production assistant, Lucy Faulkner. And I'm like worrying that I'm gonna forget someone. The two two other what did I oh I didn't say oh right, that's because I was waiting because that's the one where you can't resist clapping. Um, two other incredibly important people, Hazel Olsendorf and Sylvia Olsendorf, my daughters, and my producer, my wife, Julie Dorf. <laughs> Um, so I and I I don't know I'm great I'm so grateful to everyone for all of different reasons and but I especially just um, Sawyer my voiceover director Dawn my editor and Sophie my cinematographer I feel like um, Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz you know the like <laughs> it's the lion and the tin man and the, you know the scarecrow it's like you guys like you took such good care of me and I just <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Um, so, thank you. And, and anyway, I would kind of like, I go on and on in great detail, but let's do a Q and A. Yeah, we do have some time. Okay. Um, Any questions from the audience? Comments? Jim. Uh, 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 thank you, everyone on this, that was involved with this. But Jenny, could you talk about the aesthetics of time within a frame? and how with film it's different than a still photograph, and how that tells the story. Can you hear that from the back of the question? So Jim is asking, can I talk about the aesthetics of time in relation to the film versus a still photograph? And what's the last part? In the frame, and, in, and how it moves the story. In the frame and how it moves the story. Um, well, I mean, I have you know a very particular aesthetic um, of landscape filmmaking. Um, I was very influenced by uh, James Benning um, and William E. Jones were amazing landscape filmmakers. Um, and um, I just, I love the feeling of this, that you've got all this kind of space. Um, there's obviously a kind of a melancholy quality to the still image, still shots, and there's a little bit of movement happening and a little bit of light changing. And, and to me, personally, I mean, I make films that are the films that I want to see. And like seeing landscape films to me um, is just incredibly moving to be kind of forced to be in the moment. Um, and the audience, know, the audience too. 
Sorry? And the audience is forced to be in the moment. Right. The audience is forced to be in the moment. Um, I, uh, we went out something and I shooting, you know, a lot at like six o'clock in the morning to get it to be really quiet because San Francisco is never that quiet, especially nor is LA. <laughs> um, um, and uh, but having that as a backdrop, so my kind of method, you know, has been I've been shooting, as I said, in the film since the early '90s or mid '90s, um, just kind of gathering all this material, and then I write. I'm always simultaneously writing. And then kind of, you know, finally landing on something and like, oh, okay, this will be the film. These various interests. Um, and, uh, but, so, you know, in terms of moving the story forward, I mean, the whole thing of the road, um, you know, came up as this thing of, okay, that could be the, you know, ostensible plot if there is one, right? It's like, oh, there's a girl in L.A. That will be the plot, that will be the forward movement in terms of your question. But, like, what is the forward movement? And, I mean, obviously it's kind of an unconventional way to do that, but, yeah. But the personal narrative is the tension against that. The personal narrative is the tension against that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Hawk. Um, one thing that is very obvious is that until there's kind of a burst of people, pedestrians, and you can see individuals in cars is that for a, a long time, and I'm sure this is a conscious choice, to not have any pedestrians, no human bodies at all. And I noticed a few early just ways. You, you, you saw Waldo? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was like one, one yeah. and, the, and the silhouette of the guy or the girl in the boat. Right, yep. <laughs> but anyway, there was a point where all of a sudden there were people, uh, pedestrians, it was a night shot, and oh, you right. also perceived bodies in cars. Cars, yeah. Uh, would you talk a little bit about the concept and the design? Um, did everybody basically hear that? So, I mean, just, so yeah, in terms of the, um, not wanting any pedestrians, I, we shot, I mean, a lot of the early shooting we did, um, we, you know, the thing with shooting on film is you shoot, and then you wait, you send it away, <laughs> and it comes back, and then you go, oh, that's what we got. Like, you know, you don't know until it comes back, and then you get in the editing room and go, Shit, that's not gonna work. <laughs> there are people in there. <laughs> there are people in those shots. And the thing about people is that they're completely distracting. And they completely, if you see a person, you go, who's that? Oh, what they're wearing? Oh, what they're doing? <laughs> and actually, pigeons, too. There were so many <laughs> pigeons ruined the shots. And like, because you'd be like, what is it? You just look at it and you wanna know. It, and so then, you know, it's like a story. And it's like, that's a different story. That's not the story. You have to have like, know people so that the story is about what you're hearing and like in terms of so that's the explanation for no people that one guy there's like one guy in the very back of the shot which was like we have to use this shot it's so great and like i could have spent you know if i had like i don't know twenty thousand dollars to photoshop him out or whatever they do and CGI, right CGI, but, uh, uh, so that that's kind of that i mean um but there was that burst the burst uh, in the, w but it's kind of more people in cars and that night shot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But there were and pedestrians on the sidewalk. You're, yeah, you're there right. Shadows okay. the you're right. Yeah. 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 Um, but it, it somehow it wasn't as distracting, I think. But but was it related to the story you were? To, no, it was more like it was like <laughs> we don't have enough footage. <laughs> 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 When I, when I was finishing The Joy of Life ten, exactly 10 years ago, um, we had a moment where we frantically went out and shot more because we didn't have enough footage. And, uh, uh, and this time I didn't want to do that, so we, we just worked with what we had. But thank you. Oh, Loretta has a question. I'm, I'm wondering if you have thought about an epilogue now that Anna Parastero is going to be canonized. <laughs> Yes. Thank you. That is, yeah. Uh, so I don't know how many of you have read the news about the Pope, 
Um, he last week proclaimed that he plans to canonize Junipero Serra, make him a saint. Um, <laughs> which I, I'm, I'm loving as like a little PR angle for my film. <laughs> like, yeah, he's the star of my movie. He can't be here because he's 300 years old and dead. So, uh, uh, but I mean, I'm excited to have you know those conversations, and you know, I mean, I'm you know really happy with that part of the film that. Um, and the screening at the Vatican is going to be awesome. <laughs> the screening at the Vatican is going to be awesome. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we actually, I've been tweeting and, and tagging Pontifex. Is his good name. You know, he has a lot of followers. <laughs> Not just he hasn't retweeted. He hasn't retweeted yet, unfortunately. But uh, there's a question uh, right in front, and then we'll go to you in the gray. Jenny. Yes. Oh, okay. Jenny. Yay. Hi. Yes. Great. Oh, my God. That's so beautiful, Jenny. I mean, Thanks, Jenny. It's so, <laughs> so worth the wait. Um, I remember years ago I said, you know, Jenny, you, you can't shoot as much as you want. There are these great digital cameras. And I know that you were, I couldn't see you were on the phone. You were rolling your eyes, I'm sure. And now I'm rolling my eyes that I ever said that. Because it's so beautiful. I mean, just the depth. And your, your vocabulary, your visual vocabulary is so sophisticated. Yeah. Lovely, and your shooting is so lovely. And then the editing, I wanted to ask you, the question is, um, what's your process in terms of the visuals versus the writing? How many versions or iterations did you have? And uh, was a lot of that discovered? And, and, and was it a journey in the editing? How did you, because your vocabulary is really sophisticated and really singular. And it feels to me like you got to something in the process. And I want to know about it. Um, thank you for the question, Jen Livingston. Um, uh, yeah, well, I mean, so, you know, I do, I always feel like it's like I'm gathering these kind of, you know, building blocks of, like, the footage and then writing, and then in the editing room is really where it, where it happens. And then I always have a sense of, there's like, certain things of, like, okay, we need a bunch of shots of Junipero Serra statues, um, so we know that. And then other things is, like, we just want kind of, empty alleys and buildings and and then um, we do the we did the voiceover recording and laid that all down although there was a lot more and then we and mostly we were taking things out I guess we put a couple of new things in if it takes um, but yeah I mean in the editing um, you know putting the laying the voiceover down and then starting to put picture on and go like oh that works and wow that doesn't work and do you, I, I'm, I'd say editing with Jenny is sort of the opposite of edit, editing with anybody else. It's a really immersive kind of meditative practice where the whole point is to get as, to, the, the less is more philosophy. You know, how many words can we take out? How long can we linger on the shot? How much can we draw people in with giving them less that, that they then have to bring more to it? I have to cheat and say there were times closer to the end where we would be focused on a shot. And Jenny would be reading or saying the words and, and kind of, no, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, no, 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 don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. <laughs> and we would say, well, we're only going to do this shot for, you know, one minute and 30 seconds, or this will be a four minute shot, or do we have enough film to do a four and a half minute shot? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, don't stop, don't stop. I think I so there, the, you have words in your head that are constantly going, that each place meant something. And sure, it changes when it goes from that moment. But I think you were in the moment, in the photography. That 10, 15 years ago, it was a little different. Right. But right. we can talk about that later. <laughs> no, it, it is true, actually, because I had more of a script. I was closer to, and yeah, we would sit and shoot, and I would literally read it. Um, and and uh, I love, I mean, we have takes, because we were shooting on, with a, it was like a 400 foot, so, so we had like 12, 12 minute, we could do a 12 minute shot. We didn't do a 12 minute shot, but we did do some like six minute shots, um, and, uh, which is kind of great. There are actually only 97 shots in the film, which is... Not for a minute. <laughs> we have time for one more question. Um, yes, in the, in the gray shawl. Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah. Julia Gallagher. Uh, I, um, I, I really like the composite of stories and how it wasn't always you know, too reverent 
The map sequence, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I you know, I was really interested in telling that story, and, and in terms of the kind of connections and stuff, you know, I I had this sense of wanting to kind of have things bounce off other things and have like you know a little connection, but you know, like the going from you know El Camino Real to Vertigo kind of thing, and and the Mexican American War. Um, it's just it's something that I'm really always been interested in and wanted to tell that story and it, it because of partly because of the dates and the you know geography of it it warranted like the visual of seeing especially seeing you know the Republic of Mexico up at Oregon um, just there there was no other way that just seemed the best way to achieve that and um, and I worked with um, a couple of friends in San Francisco Julian Ewan and Monica Nolan to do the to do the map sequence, and uh, and my historical advisors, um, and it just felt it just seemed like it would kind of bring it to life in a more, you know, impactful way, um, which I hope that it did. Um, Sorry that we have more questions than we have time for, um, but the the filmmaking team will be out in the lobby. Um, let's have another round of applause for Jenny Olson.